Distinguished ladies, uh, gentlemen, many of you know me from last year, and many of you said, what's he doing here? Well, actually, I'm, I'm very proud to be one of the hosts, as is Mr. Avari, and if you think about it, uh, for some of the elders in the audience, for some of the elders, the distinguished elders, you'll remember that Mr. Dinshaw Avari was one of Pakistan's original entrepreneurs because he invested every single rupee he had in his brand spanking new Superlux Swish Hotel Beach Luxury, which opened in 1946. And uh, you were there, right, at the opening ceremony? Yeah. Uh, so he's one of the original entrepreneurs. And uh, Mr. Avari is very proud for us to continue to support this wonderful initiative which promotes entrepreneurship in the same spirit as his father back in 1946. So, before I make my presentation, and I've been told to squeeze it into five minutes, so if I talk a little too quick, just tell me to slow down. But before I continue, I want to know where are the entrepreneurs today? Where are you? Can you put your hand up? Very few. Hopefully it will change your mind by the end of this conference. But anyway, for the entrepreneurs in the room, I want you just very quickly to look to the left, look to the right, look in front of you, look behind you, because they are your future customers. Do you understand? Yeah, whatever you have, whatever you're getting ready to launch onto the market, this is your customer base sitting right here. Hopefully you're also my customer base and you'll come and eat in my restaurants and stay in my hotel. All right, now, if we could just get the lights out here, we're gonna make a quick presentation. And the first question, the first question I want to ask you is, Perhaps the most important question today, what is, what is an entrepreneur? And I have some chocolates, right, somewhere. I have some chocolates to give to someone who can give us the, you know, the right, the right answer. What is an entrepreneur? Any volunteers except for the superstars down here who've already made the grade? Young entrepreneurs, what is it? What is an entrepreneur? I'm not saying what makes an entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur? Stand up, the one person who's got the hand up. Right, another one where, oops, this one's nearest. There we go. An entrepreneur is a person who comes up with a different idea from the society and presents it in a way that can be practiced to afford the organization in a better way. Uh, that's not a bad, not a bad, uh, not a bad answer. Okay, but, uh, if you take the chocolates out of the way here, what is an entrepreneur? Let's try and answer that question, Mr. Bila. I'm sure the people at the front here will agree that entrepreneurs are a rare breed of risk takers, correct? Risk takers who take capital, their own, or, or someone else's, and use it to generate more capital. Uh -huh. Some fail, some succeed and some excel, like, as I say, the superstars in front of us. All right, so this is basically what is an entrepreneur, all right? They take capital, their own or someone else's, and they use it to generate more capital. Right, Ms. Dowd? Yeah, okay, next. What do entrepreneurs need to get started? Everybody has their own opinion on this. Let's have a look. What do entrepreneurs need to get started? Three C's. I talked about this during the press conference. The three C's. Unlike some of our school and university grades, right? Because we all tell our children, you better get an A or a B or a B plus. But to be a successful entrepreneur, you need three C's in my opinion. Let's see what the first one is. Creativity. This means being able to make a slide without slicing the person's head off, right, Mr. Milan? You need some creativity. That's one C. 
The next one. Clash. As the French say, right, Mr. Didier? Courage. You need courage. Right? If you haven't got an ounce of courage, don't get in the game. Next one. Okay, we did have some sound for that slide. Go back. All right, do it again. That's good. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. You know, it took, it took really a long time to do that. Okay, the most important of all you need. Hello. The most important one. Uh huh. Cash. You need some cash to get started. It's all very well having a great idea, but you've got you need a friendly bank manager. You need a, a good partner. You need supportive parents. You need people who believe in the idea to give you some cash. All right. What else? What's the big idea? Now many of the people here say, whoa, 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 what's the big idea? How can I make it? How can I get to the top? Well, the answer is not so simple. And you know, I want to tell all of you budding entrepreneurs, don't just do what you like doing, okay? Now, I'll show you a couple examples at the end of this presentation about people who are in tune with the needs of the market. It's not necessarily what they want to do. Many people would love to open a cupcake shop. Right, ladies? Yum, yum. Huh? <laughs> a donut shop, a hairdressing salon, a nice restaurant, right? like Mr. Okra over there. But you know, sometimes that pot of gold lies elsewhere. It's something that someone else doesn't want to do. So you need to get to it first and you need to do it well. Three examples that I've been involved in personally and I have helped fund them. Uh, one was my own mother. I didn't fund her, obviously. <laughs> She funded me. Yeah, yeah, she did. She did. Uh, my, my mother, in 1956, opened the first all-female guest house in Edinburgh, Scotland. Yeah. While my father was away serving in the army. <laughs> she didn't consult him, but it did extremely well. And uh, it, it survived for 40 years. I also funded a uh, pink taxi scheme in Bangkok uh, for uh, a lady who operates a fleet of pink taxis for women only. People, would, people said it would never work. She now has 400 pink taxis. 400 pink taxis. You see? She, you know, there's an opportunity. I met somebody in Bangkok three or four years ago uh, who, who met a few people who wanted to furnish their houses. These were expatriates who came for two or three years to Thailand. They wanted to have beautiful Thai art, antiques in their house, but they couldn't afford it. So I suggested to this lady, much to my own chagrin, because I, I did, you know, anyway, I suggested to her that she start a company renting out art and antiques. Uh -huh. Last year she made her first million dollars. Her first million dollars. She has branches all over Thailand doing extremely well. This was not something necessarily she wanted to do. It was just there. So grab that opportunity whenever you can. So what's the big idea? Let's go. Ten rules for turning the big idea into a big success. Now some of you saw this last year. I hope you wrote them down. We're going to look at them again. Rule number one, be passionate about the idea. I bet you that man works 18 hours a day in his restaurant. The hairdresser, you know, he's the one who does the $200 haircut. You've got to be passionate about your product. Otherwise, it will fail. Okay? Number one. Number two, let the quality differentiate your product and service. 
This is Amari Towers, number one hotel in Pakistan. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, some of you don't agree, that's fine. No problem, it's a democracy. <laughs> Let quality differentiate. Someone here from the pro continental, where are you? Where are you? Yeah. How did they get in? All right. <laughs> Let quality differentiate your product or service. Number three. Select your company name carefully. Now, I had a few examples. I'm not going to show them because it's a mixed audience. There's some young people here. Select your name very, very carefully. Okay? Good. Believe in yourself. If you're going to be, if you're going to set up a chain, as I say, of hairdressing salons, whatever it is, you better believe that you can do it. Okay, this is critically important. Maybe I can do it. No, not good enough. I can do this. I know I can do this. That's the spirit. All right, next one. Step out of your comfort zone. Now, I just mentioned that. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a cupcake shop? I love cupcakes. You know, cupcakes make money. But, yeah, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to find a new opportunity, something fresh. Look overseas, look on the internet. Okay. The devil is in the details, right, Mr. Okra? I'm talking about garnishing a dish or, or you know, the devil is in the detail. You've got to get all the details just right. Experiment and listen to your customers. I like this one actually. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Experiment with the cupcakes, with your dishes, with your promotions, with your whatever it is, and listen to what your customers are telling you. You know, we have a focus group in this hotel. I have 40 people that I talk to, 40 guests, every single month. And we invite them to sample new products. And we listen to them and we make changes. We make changes by listening to our people. Next, select the right people for your team. That doesn't mean your auntie, your granny, your sister, your brother, your nephew, and your granddad. Find the best available talent, recruit them, keep them, look after them. Uh -huh. I don't have an HR manager in this hotel. I have a talent acquisition officer. Oh yeah, she doesn't know that, <laughs> I told her, but uh, that's what it's all about. It's about getting great people on the team. Look at Manchester United, you know, I mean, great manager, Scottish, of course. <laughs> what can I say? Scottish, uh, but he's got a great team, great players. He selects the best players in the world. So get the right people on the team before you get started. Next, here's a big one. Here's a big one. Value your employees, look after them. Because if you invest in training and they just walk away and open a restaurant next door called Zucchini or Big Potato <laughs> and you've trained them for five years, how are you gonna feel? Well, you know, let me tell you something. People do not leave businesses, they leave their bosses. Yes? Yes? They do. They leave their bosses. If they can afford it. <laughs> right? If they can afford it. But that's true. Value your employees. Find ways to measure their satisfaction. I think the Bilal will confirm that uh, since I've been here, our turnover of staff and we have 500 staff, is around 1% per year, right? That's, that's five, right? And they all get married or go overseas. So we look after our employees. Next. Persistence wins the race. Don't give up. You know, you're going to hear, I'm sure, stories about people who have started up, they've lost everything. But you know, many people lose. They don't lose everything. They lose some money. But if you lose your confidence, hey, better 
get another line of work, okay? Because persistence wins the race every single time. Okay, next. In my opinion, there are four types of entrepreneurs. Let's have a look at the first one. Any entrepreneur who owns his or her own business. Anyone who has ever thought about starting a business. Any leader or manager looking for creative ideas to grow their existing business. Anyone in business who loves great business stories. If you love good stories, it can inspire you to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one are you? Which one of these four are you? Think about it. Next. How can we help you? Now, I would say that, obviously that's what the panel is going to do today. They're going to listen to your questions and ideas and talk to you about ways to get started. Okay, next. The big question that many of you are asking is, what is the most common or must-have trait for entrepreneurs. What happened to the chocolates? Oh, you've some of them? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> don't put them down there yet. They've melted. Where did you have them? Huh? <laughs> well, <Ooh>, la la. <laughs> and here you see a photograph of my son <clears throat> with daddy's shoes on. But uh, does anyone here. Now, this, this is an this interesting question. Uh huh. What is the most, you know, the most common or must-have trait? The fundamental trait, what do you think it is? No superheroes allowed to answer. What is the trait? You know what I mean by that? What is, what is it that you must have inside of you to be an entrepreneur? Oh yes, madam, come on, stand up. Perseverance is good, good, we've already covered that, okay. This is one that I came up with, and it comes from my own experience. And it may surprise some of you, because I'm telling you all, as entrepreneurs, to be tough guys, tough ladies, tough girls, tough boys, and don't give up. But you'd be surprised. I think the most, you know, the must-have trait for an entrepreneur is the following. Well, you know, an entrepreneur's work is kind of like that of an artist. It's a form of self-expression, right? He may have thought he was the world's greatest chef, you see? So he thought, right, I'm going to open a restaurant and I'm going to express myself through my food. <clears throat> Absolutely. Fantastic. Why not? Okay, so it's a form of self-expression. You know, when, when, when an artist is painting, uh, you know, she will inject the canvas with her beliefs and values. We have an art gallery downstairs. Go and have a look at these paintings and then meet the artists and you can see, you can see they're putting something of themselves into those paintings. The completed painting becomes an extension of herself, as does the business. When an entrepreneur founds a company, I've said she, she, imbues it with her option on how the world ought to be. It springs from her yearnings, making it quite unique and very personal. Remember, there's no guarantee that the audience or the market will accept her work. Ladies, there's no guarantee. Just try to get it right. Next. So there it is. The one in red. This is the trait that I think you should all have. It's vulnerability. It's the trait which reflects a willingness to reveal your true self and to risk misunderstanding, ridicule, and even rejection. If you do open a business, people say, oh, no, that's not going to work. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be ready to accept that and then reject it. So vulnerability is a key issue. Now that's almost the end of my presentation. I can hear some of you saying, hey, go for that. Hey, go for that. <laughs> Are you ready for that? Are you ready for this? Are you ready to become vulnerable? 
to become successful, to become ambassadors for Pakistan's trade and development, because if you are, I think you're in the right place. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh. don't get up, don't leave. We're not finished yet. I said I would give you three examples. Now this, this is interesting, because these three examples landed in my email box this morning. Now, these are three examples of people tapping in to a new requirement. First one, www.tentsplace.com. Have any of you seen this? Yeah, look, do you own that company, madam? <laughs> look, there's, there's an example. Now, this came in this morning. There's someone who said there's, that there are massive floods. Many of the organizations out there want to buy tents. Many individuals want to buy and donate tents, as we have done. There's somebody sending out 10,000 emails because he's tuned in. He's tuned in to a niche market. Fantastic. I bought one. I bought a tent. Yep, it's out the back garden. Okay, next. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> you can take this any way you want. You gotta laugh, right? But according to the latest statistics in the newspaper today, there's a million weapons in Karachi. Somebody said, a million weapons? They've got to be cleaned. <laughs> You know, there's someone advertising gun oil, for God's sake. I tell you, that guy's going to get rich. <laughs> He's going to get rich. Finally, and I think it's a very appropriate place for me to finish, the last slide is we have a website for uh, the Quran teaching, and it is offering students a, a, a course for a fee. Now, I've been here for four years. I've never seen this kind of thing on the net. It's because marketing companies are becoming much more aggressive nowadays. And they're identifying the products and they're finding new ways to get it to the market. So let's close now. Good luck to all of you. Good luck. If anybody wants a copy of this presentation, come and see me downstairs. 500 rupees? <laughs> hey, I'm an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? You think I do this for free? 500 rupees and the money goes into the flood relief box right outside my office. Thank you very much. And you can have the chocolates. Thank you.